Hello everyone, welcome to video 4 of chapter 5. In this video, we will study chapter 5.2, um, Matrix Representation of the Simplex Algorithm. And all this is a preparation for a more um, abstract study on the sensitivity analysis. Okay, let's get started. Let's consider a linear programming problem in standard form and minimize z equal cx subject to ax equal b, x bigger than zero. So here we would um, let c to be a row vector having the same size as x, which is a column vector, such that c times x becomes a, a number, it's a scalar. Okay, so when we solve this, we set it up in the tableau. So assuming that um, we put it in the tableau and then it looks like this. So um, this part will be the A matrix, that will be the B vector. And here is the C vector, which is a row vector. So it's actually a long one here. And here's Z naught, that's a number, okay? So if you use the LP assistant and then on the left, there will also be listed um, the basic variables for each equation. And then um, we would go through um, a sequence of pivot steps and based on the simplest algorithm, the theorem on that, and we would reach the following form, which is a canonical form that's following. So. Um, now we have a matrix A, which is different now from this A, so we just mark it with a star, and the B is changed as well, so it's B star, and the C vector is also changed, we write a C star, and the Z naught value is Z star. So they're all changed, but we label the updated one with the star. Okay, so in this process, um, if we are done, then we would have in the end, in this form, still it's in a canonical form, then it will have um, the associated basic variables. So let m be the number of constraints, then we would have m basic variables. They, they are just like among all these axes, they're not ordered in any way. So let's um, pick them out, so they will be listed on the left of your LP assistant, the x with a certain index. And let's call these index x of indexes j1, x of index j2, or all the way to x index jm. There'll be m of them. Okay, so those indices are now important. Okay, so now we do the following. Look at the initial A matrix. And if we put a, a subscript with a J, a number in it, that means we are taking the J's column in A. Okay, it's a column vector. Okay, and then we would form a square matrix. We call it B by taking the column of A with these corresponding index for the basic variables. So um, there will be m of them, and each of them have length m. So this is a m times m square matrix. And that we call b. And now also we will form a row vector. So we will take the same um, an index from the C, that was the row vector at the initial part, and take out the corresponding column and line them up and have still a row vector of length M. And we call this C sub B. Okay, so by now we have defined um, the matrix, the coefficient matrix, the constant term, the um, subjective function and the value z constant term there at the initial problem when you set it up and 
at the end in the canonical form. And the changed one is with the star. Okay, so all these notations. And they can be a bit confusing, so um, you could uh, follow this video um, with the handout next to you so you can easily turn the pages and recall the definition. Okay, so with all these matrices and vectors we have defined, now we claim the following. The claim star, we claim four themes, actually four relations between these A matrix and B vector and uh, there are an updated version with the star. So one says A star is B inverse times A and two is B star is B inverse times B and three says C star is C minus CB times B inverse times A and then recall B inverse times A is just A star and this also equal that with A star. And number four is about the, the term Z naught star is the Z naught minus CB B inverse B and then B inverse B is just B star, so this also equal to this expression. Okay, so the goal of this subchapter um, eventually is to prove this claim. Okay, so now we'll first take an example to get us familiar with what this claim is actually about before we um, go to the proof. Okay, so let's look at a problem. Um, that we solved in the LP Assistant, some problem. You can recover the problem from the Tableau. So what's being given is the following. So this part here, that's the initial Tableau. Okay, so I have five variables and it's in canonical form with X3, X2 as the basic variable and the right-hand side constant the objective function coefficient and the initial z naught, and then dot dot dot. What's been skipped are all the pivot steps, the sequence of those steps, and in the end we would reach the final tableau, which is here. So, and you see the um, basic variables are changed into x five and x one, and then the coefficient matrix a star here and then the right-hand side, and then this the coefficient for the objective function, they are all non-negative, and therefore we know we reached the optimal, okay? Okay, so let's revisit all the, what, um, the notations we have defined and to see exactly what they are in this example, okay? So A matrix is the coefficient matrix, of the initial problem. So as you see, you can see this this matrix here, and uh, two times five, is exactly taken from this block of the tableau. Okay, and then B is the constant vector, that's this one. And then C is the coefficient of the objective functions, that's this one, that's what's here. And then um, and the Z value is this one. Oh, um, this should be Z naught. I forgot the knot there. Okay, um, once um, that is understood, how to find the A star, B star and C star shall be rather obvious. So the A star would be taken from this block here in the final tableau. And the B star is this constant vector, and C star is this row vector, and the Z naught star is this number here. Okay, so this is the straightforward part, and let's take a look at the B matrix. Okay, so here I um, still keep the tableau here, so we know where we take things. So for the B matrix, we see that we need those two indices, which are the indices of the basic variables. So J1 is the first one, which is X5, and J2 is the second one, which is X1. So notice that they are ordered in this specific way. You have to follow the order of how they are appeared here, okay? 
So, okay, so now we will form the B matrix as taking two rows from A. One is the fifth row, and then one is the first row. So the five comes from J1, and the one comes from J2. So what is the fifth row of A? So look at the A matrix. It's this row. So I have two, three here. Okay. And then the first row of A that's under X1, it's this one. So I get next six over three. Okay. And then the row um, vector CB is formed by taking out the same columns, which now is just a number. So this the first one is under index 5, the fifth column, so it's negative 2. And then the second one is the first one, so it's 5. So that's the CB. Okay, so hope it's clear how um, the B matrix is formed. All right, so it seems like the B inverse is appearing at all these claims. So let's compute this first. It's a 2 by 2 matrix. One can first compute the determinant, which is 12, and then you just switch the two diagonals and then make the off diagonals um, negative. It's very quick. Okay, so I have the B inverse. And if you don't believe, you can verify by checking B inverse times B, and that shall be the identity matrix. Okay, let's verify the four claims um, we have done for this example. So let's compute B inverse times A. So this is B inverse, and then this is the A matrix. And then it's nothing but A matrix times matrix. We can work it out. Let's see, for example, the first position here is in, in this row times this column, right? So, so 3, 6, minus 3, 6. Uh, okay, so 3 times 6 is positive. And then 3 times negative 6 is negative, and it becomes 0, and so on and so forth. And then you can find out that this is the number you will get. Of course, divide by 12, don't forget that. And then you compare this, and you see that's exactly A star. Okay, so you're welcome to work out the details here. Okay, now let's check the second com um, claim, um, B inverse times the B vector. So this is the B inverse, and that's the B vector. So it's a 2 by 2 matrix times a vector, and then divided by 12, and then one can compute. So I have 3 times 6, negative 18, 6 times 15, that's 90, and then the result is divided by 12, and you get 6. Okay, And for the second one, you do this, and you get 12 over 12 is 1. And then you compare that, you see it's exactly the B star. Okay, the third claim is for the C star. So I need to compute C minus CB times A star. And A star, we just um, have it. A star is here. So um, C is this one, okay? CB is this one and times A star, which is here. And you can just plug in and work out and this vector times a star and you get that one and then let's do the subtraction 5 minus 5 is 0 0 minus negative 1 6 is positive 6 and so on and so forth and you get this row vector and you see that's exactly c star okay and then finally um for the z naught term z naught minus cb um, B star and okay so that's the Z naught and that's the CB and that is the B star okay so you you do the calculation of this times that it gives you a number negative 7 and you add this up is negative 14 and that's exactly the Z naught star okay so in this example the four parts of the claim star are all verified and, uh, and that's just one example. So um, in the next video, we'll go through a detailed proof to show that they, this, all the four properties there, they hold in general. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time.